this is Mark Michael Faraday, one of the most important scientists of the Victorian age, uh, basically responsible for um, electromagnetism and all the electrical equipment we have today. He was very poor when he was born. He was a blacksmith's son, and he worked as a bookbinder's apprentice, and at night he went home and read books. And one of the books that he read was a book called Conversations on Chemistry by a Swiss immigrant called Jane Marseille. And Conversations on Chemistry was translated into several European languages. It appeared in many editions. And it was the first introduction to science, not only of Michael Faraday, but also of many other scientists. And to his credit, he did always pay tribute to her until he died. So it's, I think this is an excellent example of how influential these women educators were, even though in conventional histories of science, we never hear anything about them at all. He was also the rather younger contemporary of Mary Somerville, whom I mentioned earlier, the woman whose bust was shown at, was still on display at the Royal Society. Um, she had a very successful career as a writer, a translator, scientific interpreter. She became known as the Queen of Science. And Charles Lyle, <coughs> sorry, Charles Lyell was a very famous geologist. Um, he was the man who was extremely influential on Charles Darwin uh, uh, when he was developing his theory of evolution. And he wrote to his fiancée, Had our friend Mrs. Somerville been married to a mathematician, we should never have heard of her work. She would have merged it with her husband's and passed it off as his. And I agree, I think Lyle is absolutely right. But she did manage to do a lot of independent work on her own. And she, be she did become very famous in her own right. But um, not as an originator of new knowledge, more as a translator, an interpreter, a communicator, the sort of person who's essential for passing on scientific information. I think it's a bit ironic that Charles Lyell should have written this to his fiancée, because that's precisely how he behaved to her. I looked for a picture of Mary Lyell. Uh, I couldn't find one. Uh, whenever I looked on Google Images, I kept getting referred back to pictures of him. So I'm afraid I've just had to replace her um, with a silhouette. She's rather like uh, Marie Lavoisier. When they were engaged, she learnt German. Their honeymoon trip was a field, uh, field uh, exploration trip for geology. She edited all his works. Uh, he, could, he had very short sight, so she did a lot of writing for him. Uh, she did the illustrations of his book, and she classified a lot of his collections. So, as evidence of this, this is what she wrote in a letter to her sister. I have taught Antonia, Antonia was her maid, and I've shown these two women, Mary Lyle and Antonia, as black silhouettes, because there's no surviving picture of them. I've taught Antonia to kill snails and clean out the shells, and she is very expert. Uh, Shells and snails might not seem like a very important subject now, but in geology and biology of the 19th century, when Darwin was developing his theories of evolution, they were extremely important. So there was Mary Lyle contributing enormously to all of Charles Lyle's research projects.